Life Audio. The Mama Take Heart podcast with Rebrina Rettle is brought to you by Life Audio and is a part of our Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational, faith-affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. You're listening to Mama Take Heart, Understanding Your Gen Z Girl, a show designed to help you be the compassionate, gospel-centered, and influential voice in your girl's life. I'm your host, Barbrina Rettle. February is Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month, so today... We're going to have a frank and necessary discussion about teens and emotionally abusive relationships. This episode contains references to domestic or partner violence. Please listen with care. This is part one of a conversation on emotional abuse. Today's guest is Stephanie Olson. She is a speaker and author and the Chief Executive Officer of the Set Me Free Project, a prevention education organization on human trafficking, social media safety, and healthy relationships. Stephanie has a mission to share that each person has an intrinsic value that cannot be changed. After living years with parent abandonment, eating disorders, alcoholism, and domestic and sexual violence, She overcame through determination, faith, and resilience. Stephanie turned her trauma into triumph. Now a sought-after speaker, Stephanie runs a successful nonprofit organization and loves to speak to her audiences of all kinds, faith and not. She's inspiring, encouraging, and bringing hope wherever she speaks. Her work on teaching resilience in life and leadership has inspired people across the United States. Stephanie will inspire and empower. The last time we spoke, we talked about establishing boundaries. I wanted to talk a little bit today about what moms and their girls should know about emotional abuse. Yeah. This is Teen Violence and Dating Awareness Month. Yeah. We do talk about violence, domestic violence, but sometimes I think it's difficult for girls to understand what emotional abuse looks like. And so I thought this would be a good conversation for us to have. Yeah, so. I think it's important first to really determine what dating violence is because Mm. you're right when we hear violence we think physical and we don't think emotional but the reality is that emotional abuse is very violent and so it's really understanding what that looks like and we know that one in three teens experience some sort of dating violence in their relationships. And so that's a, that's a lot of kiddos. And so what does that look like? And how can we really determine that difference? Or is there a difference? If you can explain to us, what is emotional abuse? Yeah, it involves a lot of different things. So it can be how we talk to somebody. So when we are abusive in the way we talk, maybe somebody is calling, you know, their partner, you're stupid. I want you to die. Mm. Um, you're worth nothing. Mm. And one of the things I say about emotional abuse is the person that kind of goes into that abusive relationship is never the same person that comes out of that relationship. Mm -hmm. And emotional abuse leaves, you know, a lot of time, well, they're, you know, words can't hurt us. What's the saying? Sticks and stones may break our bones, but words will never hurt us. Not true. Not at all true. And so when we're dealing with those kind of emotional issues, could be control. It could be, I'm going to determine how you dress, who your friends are. You can't use your phone in a certain way. All of those things really change how a person feels about themselves, looks at themselves and lives their life. 
And that is detrimental to who we are. And especially Mm -hmm. when we are young female teens, I mean, that's a, that's a tough spot to be in. I agree. Yes. And I I was wondering if you could give us, well, one, we want mom to be on the lookout to make sure that her girl is in an emotionally healthy relationship. Uh, But we also want the teens to know if they're in an emotionally unhealthy relationship. So what are the signs of emotional abuse in the teen that the mom should look out for? So I think we should start by addressing what a healthy relationship looks Mm, like. Sounds great. Because a healthy relationship is going to be a relationship that has mutual respect. Mm. So if, if you say something, if I say, Hey, let's do this. Let's go eat after this show, five cheesecakes. Let's just go do it. And you say, gosh, no, I I really don't feel comfortable with that. If we're in a healthy relationship, my response is going to be, okay, that is fine. I'll go eat them myself, you know, whatever it may be, but I respect your choices. I respect your decisions. I respect your privacy. Mm -hmm. I respect your boundaries. I respect all of those things. And the way that I speak to you is respectful. So I'm going to, you know, I always say you want to be with somebody and you want to be somebody who, when you enter their space, you're leaving feeling better about yourself than feeling worse about yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a sign of a healthy relationship. When you are leaving that individual, you actually feel really good about yourself. You feel better about yourself. Are there going to be bad days? Absolutely. But a healthy relationship is about mutual respect, mutual trust, and honoring each other. Mm-hmm. So signs of an abusive relationship, you're going to start seeing changes in that person. So if you've got a daughter in an abusive relationship, you're going to start seeing changes in the way they behave. Mm -hmm. Now, that could be changes in the way they dress because all of a sudden their partner is saying, hey, you can't dress like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe even changes in their friendships. Maybe they spent a lot of time with their friends and and they went out and now they never spend time with their friends. Their, Their sole experience is with this person that they're dating that can be a huge indicator of an emotional abuse. A lot of that happens via texting or through social media. And so as parents, I would say, help help your kids with that social media piece. And it is okay to monitor their phones, their, their texts or social media, because our job as parents is getting our children to be strong, adult, amazing women, but we, we want them alive. And that sounds really dramatic, but, but we're in a day and age where there are really, really serious issues. And we want to make sure that we are being their parent and making sure that they're safe and healthy. is a summer at Summer Fun Water Park in Belton. They're open seven days a week all summer long. Summer Fun Water Park is the perfect place to beat the heat on hot Texas days. Come cool off in our lazy river, speed down all three of our 300-foot slides, and relax with the kids in our kiddie pool. For more details or info on private parties, birthday parties, special events, or to purchase season passes, go to summerfunwaterpark.com. Summer Fun Water Park. Family fun at an affordable price. Located right here in Belton. No te pierdas la historia no contada de Elizabeth I. El rey ha muerto. Una producción original de Stars Play. Ya anheláis poder, princesa. Su juego es aprovechar o matar. No me matarán. ¿Qué es lo que queréis? Volver a ser como era. Becoming Elizabeth. Ahora nuevas series en streaming solo en Stars Play. Sometimes I think that the girl maybe maybe she 
not necessarily thinks there's something wrong, but she knows she's not feeling right about what's happening, but she's too ashamed or embarrassed to tell anyone about it. And so, especially when it comes to the social media piece, that is important for uh, mom to be on the lookout for that. And then also to, to have a open relationship where her daughter can come to her yeah even if she's feeling ashamed and sometimes sometimes it'll happen in conversation yes how do you feel about so and so you know how are things going in this area and just kind of having those conversations to pick up on what's really going on in her life one thing I've noticed though is sometimes a girl may be defensive Mm -hmm. so if she if the girl thinks oh my mom it's going to judge me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Or she's defensive yeah. of the abuser. Right. right. Absolutely. So what do you do in a situation like that? So uh, first of all, you made an excellent point that it often comes in conversation. One of the things that I always say to parents is that needs to start at a really young age, because if we want our daughters to come to us with the stuff that makes our hair curl, I would say, this is why my hair is curly because my daughters have come to me with things that are just, and you think, oh my gosh, but if you want your kiddos to come with you, come to you with the hard things, you have to listen to the things that drive you crazy, right? You have to listen to the hours about Minecraft. And, you know, I mean, you got to listen to that stuff. And celebrity yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And then when that happens, they know that they can come to you about the really big stuff. Mm-hmm. And when they do, there's a couple of things that we have to put into place right away that are really challenging. So the first thing we need to do is immediately not react externally. Mm. So we could be going crazy inside and reacting inside. But what they need to see is us saying, oh gosh, wow, thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate that. And know then they can have that conversation and start talking to us and they know we're actually listening. Mm. That's, that's really critical. The second thing we need to do is make sure that we're not asking the why questions. So we're not coming across with a shame or blame type of response. So instead of why can't you be more like your sister? Why did you do that? It's got to be more of the how or what. How did that happen to you? Mm -hmm. What did that feel like? And I think when that happens, those conversations become much more open and much more accessible for our kiddos. Mm -hmm. Now, when they come to you or when you ask them a question and they become defensive, I think the first thing that we can do is respond to that in a really loving way. Mm -hmm. And just say, oh gosh, that must've felt kind of bad the way that I asked that question. Or, you know, I, I, I just want you to know I'm, I'm not judging you right now. Mm -hmm. I just want to learn more and have a conversation with you about that. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that kind of takes that wall down and then they'll be able to, they're able to talk to you about it. Now it's also really important to remember all of the information may not come out at once. Right. And that's critical and it's okay We don't want to push them into having that conversation, but if they're not ready to talk about certain things, then we need to be willing to come back to that. As long as they're not, you know, we're not talking about you're in imminent danger. You are, I mean, those things we handle right then, but if it's something that, you know, we're just going to give this a little time, have those conversations over time. Mm -hmm. I would say also, before you enter into those conversations, of course, lift that conversation up to the Lord. Oh, yes. For help and, you know, how you you ask for help in your tone of voice and how you present it. And then make sure that your daughter, oh, your facial expression. All of it, yes. That is so big for me because 
I, I can't, everything shows on my face. (laughs) I cannot (laughs) hide how I feel. And so I have to really work on that. And Mm -hmm. when you said, don't react, that's another thing. (laughs) Hard. Yeah, I have such a hard time and I have to really pull myself back. I have to take a deep breath, you know, a few breaths. And then yeah. enter in with, okay, well, let's talk about this, you know, okay. otherwise I'm like, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Otherwise I'm like, oh my gosh, what, yeah. <laughs> what happened to what happened? So and- I got to tell you the first time that my daughter, my oldest daughter told me something that just freaked me out. We were in a car and it was really dark. So that helped a lot because she couldn't see my facial expression really well. And I was able to just look straight ahead but yeah, that's hard. It's hard to do. Mm-hmm. It's hard to do. So I always say, give yourself grace because mm-hmm. that is, uh, that's a, it's a tough thing to not react. Yeah. Another thing is just to make sure that she knows you're for her. When you said, how did you, you asked those how mm-hmm. questions or what happened? How did that make you feel? And if they're starting to become defensive, just say you, to them, well, one of the things I said to my daughter is, you are one of the most important people in my life and I love you dearly and I only want what's best for you. I think that they have to have that reassurance and not I what I think is best for you, but I only want what's best for you. Exactly. And I want what, how God sees you. I want other people to see you that way. And he sees you with love and care and that you're precious and, you know, you want to reassure with, with words that she can say, okay, th- this isn't coming from a bad place. This is coming right. from a good place. Yeah. And, and that our love is not conditional mm. and there is nothing that you can do to make me love you less. Yes. And that is so important. And I think, you know, when, when you talk about God's love, I mean, I think, he loves me and he knows everything about me, you right. know? So this is, this is how we have to love our kids. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So how can we support our girl who may have a friend yeah. in a abusive relationship? She wants to be a good friend. She wants to be there for her friend, but how can mom support the daughter? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it's it's really more of the same. Sometimes they want advice. What should I tell my friend? What should I do? And so if we can offer some of those solutions that are, you know, be a good friend, listen, walk her to the counselor and at the school and, and talk, talk to the counselor with her so Mm -hmm. that she's not alone. Mm -hmm. Some of those pieces or, you know, being supportive as a friend, sometimes all she wants is you to just be there with her and and be able to tell you this is what's going on. I don't know what to do, or, you know, this is what happened, what happened. And I think supporting our daughters, and again, it's without the judgment piece that's key so so we can't we can't say i can't believe she would do that that's mm-hmm. ridiculous i'm so glad you are not that like that you know right. that can't be our response mm-hmm. it has to be out of love and recognizing and you know i i get it firsthand i was in dating violence situations when i was a teenager and as an adult woman in my marriage. Mm-hmm. And so recognizing that these experiences can happen to anybody mm. and really understanding. I mean, if we're talking one in three teens, we all know somebody who is in an emotionally abusive relationship as a teenager. Mm. And so just really understanding that it, it's not a, a character issue. Mm. And how can we help that person through that? Also, when you said it's not in char- a character issue, They also need to understand it is not an intelligence issue. Correct. Uh, Because I think a lot of times they they turn it 
end to themselves and blame themselves. Oh, I should have known. I was so stupid. I can't believe I let someone do this to me. And to be honest, that is the abuser's goal. That's right. That's right. And that's exactly what the abuser wants you to walk away from because I'm the only one. You're you're either too stupid to take care of yourself or nobody cares about you the way I do. And so I love that you said that it is not an intelligence issue. And it's amazing how easy it is to fall into those relationships because it usually starts with this is so exciting. This is so wonderful. This person loves me. This, you know, the whole jealousy thing. Jealousy is um, an emotion, a human emotion. When we're talking about humans, jealousy is all about, you know, something pretty negative. But when we're in a relationship and this person is telling us they're jealous and they don't want me to be with anybody else in that newness, that can be really exciting because oh my gosh, that's how much they love me. Mm -hmm. And and so it is easy to fall into those abusive situations. Yes, jealousy does not equal love. Right. One of the things for me when I was growing up, I did not like a jealous nature. I I thought jealousy was insecurity. That's how I viewed jealousy. I didn't I didn't view it as, oh, they really love me if they if they're jealous, I, I saw it as insecurity and distrust. I saw it as, oh, they don't trust me if they're jealous. Right. right. Um, I did have a friend and she thought, oh, he's jealous. That means he loves me. No, that is, is not right. love. So they need to be aware of that also. Yeah, exactly. Well, well this has been a really good conversation. Another thing I wanted to make sure that people understood is the rate of speed at which a relationship moves. Mm, that, that's a good one. Y- yes, because sometimes people who, not all people who move in quickly are abusers, but a lot of abusers want to move that relationship fast because right. they want to gain control and momentum as quickly as possible. Exactly. And so that's exactly. something to keep an eye out for mom to keep an eye out on and also to have the conversation with your daughter. Why does it have to move this quickly? What is it that's happening? Right. Especially as a teenager, it's, I've heard the saying that the older you get, the quicker your relationships go because you know who you are and it's just a little, it goes a little bit faster. As a teen, it's really important to take time. One of my biggest regrets as a teen is that I actually dated somebody not not just the dating to get to know people but that I was in a serious relationship for a long period of time because I missed out on so much high school experience because of that Hmm. and so when our kiddo is in a relationship and then boom it's just all of a sudden they're serious there's nobody else around they're not going out with their friends they're just I love this person and I'm going to be with this person for the rest of my life that is an indicator that things are moving too quickly and it, and it might not be a healthy relationship yeah and then also teams get this they get that dopamine fix And so when this person is pouring all this affirmations their way, you know, they grab onto them because their brain is still developing their emotions are still, like you said, trying to get to know who they are as a person. And so that person that maybe the abuser can have a quickly have a lot of control over that because they keep giving all that affirmation, affirmation, affirmation. And then when the time is right, they will withdraw that affirmation. They will withdraw, wow. withdraw, withdraw. And then the girl is hung up on, but he said this about me before. Yeah. And it was so new. It was so beautiful. And I'm going to get that back. And it, that's not always the case. And and one thing the girl needs to understand is she cannot change this person. You no. cannot change this person. The no. person has to be willing to change. And to be honest with you, the Lord is the only one that can change his heart. Amen. And you have to understand that. Well, and love is not about changing somebody. I hear so often, oh, I just, I love him so much. I just want to change him. That's not what love is. Mm -hmm. And so if you go into a relationship 
having designs that you're going to change this person is probably not the right person for you. And yeah, you're right. Only God can change our heart. And we are not Holy Spirit Junior. Wow. Okay. So, well, I want to thank you so much, Stephanie, for joining us for this very important conversation and helping our moms sort this hard thing out. It's tough. It is tough. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I have information on how you can contact Stephanie at the Set Me Free Project. And also, if you know someone who is in an abusive situation, you can call the National Domestic Violence Hotline, 1-800-799-7233. And I'll have all the links to all the other organizations. Love is respected. One Love Foundation. So you can check the links uh, and I'll have them all in the show notes. And of course, it's a Set Me Free project. Thanks again, Stephanie. Take care. Thank you. Remember, God is for you and you're not alone. With his spirit, you are filled with courage and strength of purpose. So don't fret, Mama. Instead, take heart. Mama Take Heart is a production of Life Audio and the Salem Web Network. If you liked what you just listened to, would you take a second and leave us a rating in your favorite podcast app? It really does help more people like you find our show. This podcast is produced by me, Kelly Givens, and Stephen Sanders, with executive oversight by Stephen McGarvey. You can find more podcasts like this over at lifeaudio.com.